Ghana's Minister of Trade and Industry, Mr. Katie Hammond, says $1.98 billion oil refinery facility at Tema has been scheduled to commence operations by the end of August. That's this year. The refinery is the latest investment of the Centio Group and is expected to produce uh, 5 million tons of petroleum products, including liquefied petroleum gas, jet fuel, gasoline oil, uh, diesel, and uh, fuel oil. Conducting a tour of the facility, the minister confirmed that Centio Group was in discussions with the Ministry of Energy to acquire 500,000 barrels of crude oil from Ghana's oil fields for its first production. The refinery also expected to produce 350,000 tons of a uh, uh, series uh, of pitch products, 200,000 tons of lubricating base oil and solvent naphtha and 400,000 tons of byproducts such as propylene, ammonium, sulfate, sulfuric acid and sulfur. Ghana, one of Africa's fastest growing hydrocarbon markets, is seeking to double its production by the end of 2023. Asian stocks rose for a fifth straight day today on course for their best week this year as cooling U.S. inflation stock speculations that the Federal Reserve could pause rate hikes after this month. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan rallied 0.86% to put on track for a 5.6% weekly advance. The biggest in eight months, South Korea, Kospi and Taiwan's benchmark each jumped about 1.2% while Australian shares gained 0.85%. Hong Kong Gang Seng added 0.25%, mainland Chinese blue chips rose 0.17%, Japan's Nikkei was last up 0.19% on the roller coaster session as the index struggled to find its feet following its retreat from a 33 year peak reached out uh, the start of this month. US E minus uh, equities features also pointed to a slightly lower restart for the SP 500 after the index rallied 0.85% overnight. FTSE features sipped 0.24%, German DAX features edged 0.12% lower. Well, some company news now. ExxonMobil Co. has agreed to buy pipeline operators Denver Incorporated for $4.9 billion to accelerate its energy transition business, where they established carbon dioxide sequestration operation. The acquisition is in part of ExxonMobil's newly launched uh, CU, CCUS projects. The company's chief executive officer, Mr. Duran Woods, says the company's low-carbon business has the potential to outperform its legacy oil and gas business within a decade and generate hundreds of billions in revenue. Denbury chief executive officer, Mr. Chris Kendall, in a statement said that the significant capital and years of work are required to fully develop its carbon dioxide business, making Deep Pocket Exxon the ideal partner for the deal. Denbury is an oil and gas producer that owns and operates 1,300 miles of carbon dioxide pipeline network in the U.S., including pipelines that span the Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast petrochemical industry hotland, where Exxon has sought to build a carbon hub. Australia's treasurer has announced that Michelle Bullock will lead the Reserve Bank of Australia as first woman to head the Apex Bank in a 63-year history of the financial institution. Her appointment comes as the country continues to battle rising inflation and major shakeup taking place at the Apex Bank. Ms. Bullock, a veteran economist at the Central Bank, will take over from outgoing Governor Philip Lowry in September. Australia's Prime Minister, Tony Albanese, described Bullock as an outstanding economist and leader. In northern New South Wales. This morning the Cabinet has met and agreed with the recommendation from the Treasurer, supported by myself, that Michelle Bullock be appointed as the ninth Reserve Bank Governor. Michelle will be the first female Governor since the independent RBA was founded in 1959. The incoming Governor will oversee the implementation of the recommendations of the RBA review to make sure we have the most effective central bank and monetary policy framework as Australia and the world faces ongoing economic challenges. Crude oil prices were set to post their third straight week of gains for the first time since April, despite falling slightly today due to broader supply concerns over disruption in Libya and Nigeria and hopes of a higher U.S. crude demand amid cooling inflation. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell to sell at $76.84, dollars 
with a downward price margin of 0.07%. Brent also experienced a price decline of 0.14% to sell at $81.25. Bonnie Life recorded an uptick of 0.53% to sell at $81.88 uh, per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, crude dealers are offering $80.63 with an upward price review of 1.20%.